Before I start, I want to thank Madam Toma for her hospitality for the second year in a row. To be very honest, there is no way we could do this without your help and support. And I want you to know how much my colleagues and I thank and appreciate the friendship and the sponsorship that uh, we have with Spurcase. And I will tell you, when I first came to Luxembourg 32 years ago, um, uh, to work at, um, at the NATO agency out in Capellan, there was a Spur case on base. They took me in on the, first, on the first day and said, sign here, sign here, sign here. And I had a bank account and I used it to finance the, the townhouse that uh, I own now in Capellan, which doesn't have a mortgage anymore, but after, ma after many years. So you were there for me. You and your predecessors were there for me on the first day I came to Luxembourg. And I want you to know personally how much I appreciate that, as well as how much Amchem appreciates it. So thank you. I also want to thank my friend Italo De Lorenzo, who is right there, right? One, two, three, fourth row. And um, when we said we were putting this so again, we would not be able to do this with, you know, we're a nice organization, AmCham, but we don't have the resources. Without the help of Amazon, you guys wouldn't have food and drink later on tonight, which I know that you're all looking forward to. So Italo, I want you to know how much I appreciate you for that. Soon to be on the cover of the New York Times, but you know. Uh, and I have to tell you, the best part about that is I didn't have to go to him and ask for money. He came to us and said, listen, we want to go ahead and we want to sponsor the New Year's thing. And of course, being a clever boy, I said, well, I don't know. I'm going to have to check. And I go, thank you. Thank you, Italo. Very much appreciated. Um, Mr. Deputy Prime Minister, um, you are such a huge asset um, for Luxembourg. Um, I have to, every time I think about it, I have to go ahead and think about how lucky Luxembourg is to have you for your communication skill, for your passion, for your energy, for all you do for the, for the country. I have to tell you that what I was planning on doing when I got up here is ask everybody to stand to give you a round of applause, but Madam Toma already did that, so I'm not going to embarrass you by doing that again. But I do certainly want to say from my side and from the community that, that I belong to, um, we consider you to be just an enormous asset for the country. We consider you also to be a valuable friend and partner of the United States. And we every day appreciate everything that you do. I think you all know because I say it enough that I love Ambassador Barrett, so, um, and he's shy, so I'm not gonna say much more about that, but we are very lucky to have a nice em embassy um, here. You all have to know that I have an incredibly difficult job. I'm up here to go ahead and be a talking head following three brilliant speakers, and I just happen to be an old guy from New York, little country boy, who um, is doing the best I can um, in, probably one of the last jobs that I'll have um, during my lifetime. And um, when I left NATO and came to uh, Clearstream to go ahead and be a head of human resources at, um, at Clearstream, um, I, first I will tell you, when I was at the Pentagon, um, the, the Air Force wanted to send me to North Dakota to be the chief of maintenance for the first B-2 bomber wing. Now, that was a job that theoretically would have gotten me promoted to Brigadier General. It was a, really a dream, a dream job, but it was in North Dakota. <laughs> America is a wonderful country, but North Dakota is flat, it's cold, it doesn't necessarily have very many trees. It actually is a good place to have runways for a B-2 bomber wing or for other big stuff like that. But I was just finishing up with a divorce and the last thing that I wanted to do was be in North Dakota looking for a date. <laughs> I, ride West, I ride English saddle, I don't ride Western saddle. In North Dakota, they don't know what English saddle is. I know how to use guns, but I really don't like killing anything. That's part of what they do in North Dakota too. 
So anyway, I had a patron who I was responsible for foreign military sales for the United States Air Force for the logistic supports. And you know, you can't, you can't sell people weapon systems if they don't have logistic support to make it work. So um, I, my patron, if you will, was the Under Secretary of Defense. So, um, and I did a lot of traveling all over the world with him doing interesting things that I can't talk about. So, um, so I called him up on the phone and said, sir, if you've got a chance, I've got something personal to talk about. And he said, oh, what are you doing for lunch? And I said, well, nothing yet. And he said, well, come on up. I'll take you to the general's dining room. And I, I had never been there before, so that was cool. So I went and did that. We did the small, small talk, blah, 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 blah. And then he said, okay, so now what's going on? And I said, well, the, you know, you know, I've been at the Pentagon for a while. It's been a great run. I hugely love everything that you've given me an opportunity to do. And, um, but the Air Force is thinking about um, my next assignment, and they think they're doing me a favor by looking at me for a job where I could get promoted to Brigadier General, but it involves going to North Dakota, which I really don't want to do. So I'm going to get on the stick, and I'm going to find my own job before that happens, because I just don't really want to go to North Dakota. Which, if there's anybody here from North Dakota, I'm sure it's a really wonderful place, but at that point in time, that was not on my, not on my radar. And, um, uh, he, and he said to me, oh, well, you know, that's great, because I have the perfect job for you. And I said, oh? And he said, yeah. He said um, re he was responsible for the NATO supply agency, for the American involvement in the NATO supply agency in Luxembourg. And the senior American over there was not doing the right things to make friends. And he needed to send some smooth-talking guy on over to calm the water um, to get us back being in the right shape to do things. And he said, you'd be absolutely perfect for that. And I said, oh, sir, that's really great. Thank you so much. Where's Luxembourg? <laughs> it's a true story. Sorry. Where's Luxembourg? And he said, listen, I'm going to a board meeting in three weeks. Come with me, and you can look around and see what you think. And if you like it, we'll close the deal. So, um, so I told him, I said, well, you know, I can't, I can't go to my general and I can't uh, tell my general I want to go to Luxembourg to go look for a new job. He said, no problem, I'll take care of it. So the next day, my general called me in and said, oh, the undersecretary called. He wants you to go to some NATO meeting that's going to take place in Europe, beside, I don't know, someplace, Luxembourg maybe. And he said, that's kind of the same thing that you did with them last year in Bangkok and um, similar kind of thing. I said, okay. And he said, so clean your desk and you're going to Luxembourg. And I said, okay, we have to keep the undersecretary happy. So I came over um, to Capellan and um, I was the colonel carrying the undersecretary's bag. Nobody cared about me at all. So I spent a lot of time out where people were smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee finding out what was really going on. And after I had been there for a couple of days, I knew who was naughty and who was nice, who deserved to live and who deserved to die. And I came back three months later as the senior American. And because I was supposed to do a little bit of entertaining, I moved into a grace and favor house in Capellan. Had a nice neighbor um, with a big house who ended up uh, having had a really big dog and his big dog liked my yard better than his and every time I took took the dog back I got a bottle of wine which wasn't a bad deal <laughs> and then after about another four months one day I had a group of people coming over for a working lunch because that's what I was supposed to do and we went up and as we're going on in my neighbor drove up in his big BMW and and um, um, said, oh, looks like an important NATO meeting today. Keep us safe. I said, yes, sir, we'll do our best. And I got inside, and my guest said, do you know who that is? And I said, yeah, he's my neighbor, he's a nice guy, but uh, Luxembourger, but his dog likes my yard better, blah, 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 blah. And they said, no, 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 do you know who he is? And I said, well, apparently I don't, so who's my neighbor? And they said, your neighbor is John Juncker. And at the time, I was a military guy, so I wasn't really paying much attention to it. But now, since I'm a little older and a little wiser, and I've been around a little, a little longer, can you imagine a place on the country where you can move into a house as a foreigner and be next to, at the time, um, the Minister of Finance, who later, of course, became everything that we know and we respect about, um, about um, Mr. Juncker. But, um, uh, and... 
aside from getting bottles of wine from him, I ended up having a halfway decent and friendly relationship with him, which as a foreigner, I have to say that's one of the wonderful things about Luxembourg. In Luxembourg, I get to have um, a tiny, tiny little friendship with the man who used to be the, the prime minister and now is the deputy prime minister. I mean, I know, sir, that I'm not really particularly important to you, but occasionally you're nice to me and you shake my hand and you make me feel good. <laughs> Other countries on the planet are not like that. We are incredibly lucky for so many reasons to go ahead and be in Luxembourg. When I joined AmCham, AmCham had as its motto and its symbol a, um, the torch from the flag of liberty, from the Statue of Liberty in the United States. Not bad, it was cool. But you know, to me, it looked like an ice cream cone. And I didn't really, I mean, I understood the symbolism and I loved the symbolism, but I didn't like the ice cream cone part. I didn't think it was punchy enough. And I wanted to do something because I'm from New York. Um, Luxembourg has lots of trees, New York has Central Park. Luxembourg has the United Nations. Luxembourg, uh, United, United, New York has the United Nations. Luxembourg has uh, the European Commission. New York is 50% foreigners. Luxembourg is 49.8% foreigners. <laughs> you know, there are so many connectivity things between Luxembourg and, you know, and at least New York and my part of it that I have liked and have appreciated over the years for its multiculturalism, its multilingualism, its openness, its innovation, and uh, all of those kind of good things. So I said I wanted to combine the symbol of Luxembourg, which is the dragon, with the American flag and make that um, the AmCham motto. So if any of you who see that, please understand that was a conscious and deliberate decision because I wanted to do it as a gesture of pulling America and pulling Luxembourg um, together because I think that America and Luxembourg share common values. And I think that we do in our own contributions in different ways, we do really, really good things. Now, you guys know, many of you who know me and have seen me around for a while, that I really like to talk. And I'm smart enough to know that I'm keeping you from Italo's food and drinks. So I'm going to just say a couple more things. <laughs> no, really, this is true. Um, when you leave tonight, there's going to be a goodie bag um, for you. And the goodie bag is going to, um, can, to include um, from uh, Chronicle. They have done a very nice little book about why Luxembourg is cool and a great place to go ahead and live and work. So you're going to have a copy of that. You're also going to have a copy of Taste and Style, Luxembourg Taste and Style, the newest cookbook magazine from B.B. Wintersdorf and, um, and her um, cookbook collection. And I have to say, I looked at this cookbook um, and went through some of the recipes in it, and I've cooked a couple of them. It is an incredible, it's the best, she's been doing cookbooks for a while now. I think this is the best cookbook that she has produced. It's really, really good. There's a little coupon thing inside if you want to sign up and get, um, get subscription to it. It's also for sale all over Luxembourg. It is really an incredibly good cookbook, and it happens to be produced uh, in English, which is not a bad language. I think most of you all speak English. I think it's a, um, it's a really, really good cookbook. So you're going to get copies of that uh, on your way out. So I needed to go ahead and say that. And other than say that, in listening to everything that um, our Deputy Prime Minister and Mr. Barrett have said, you know, there is the old Chinese um, expression that says, may you have the good fortune to live in exciting times. Maybe there's a better way of saying it, but that's more or less the theme of it. May you have the good fortune and the luck to live in exciting times. We live in exciting times. We have the good fortune to live in exciting times Living in Luxembourg, which is, as far as I'm concerned, the best European headquarters and best location for international people 
in Europe that you can possibly find. And on top of that, um, I think the majority of us uh, are here because we have an opportunity to work for really good international companies in a great working environment where we can go ahead and we can do good things. You know, the government has terrific programs, but if it doesn't have income, it can't pay for the programs. And the money to pay for the programs that we do in Luxembourg that are good come from you and your companies because you and your companies are doing such a great job of going ahead and using Luxembourg as a headquarters location. Of course, we have challenges that we need to go ahead and deal with this year. But I would look on this year as being an opportunity for all of us to step up to the table personally, in our private lives, and in our professional lives to just show the rest of the world how good we all can possibly be. Thank you for being here tonight. There are other places on the planet that you could be and you came to be here tonight. I will tell you that everyone in this room tonight was personally invited to come, personally. So if there's anybody that you meet outside over a drink or something like that that you don't know, you have my personal guarantee that they are worth knowing. Please introduce yourself to them and let them introduce themselves to you. You are a powerful force for good in this country, and I think beyond the borders as well. Thank you so much.